Hi friends, I'm Angelica. Uh, today I'm coming out in front of the camera and introducing myself to you, showing a little bit of my crafty area. And uh, uh, we're gonna be making boxes today. I have two videos that will um, be coming out. One's just basic box measurements and putting boxes together. And then the second video, which is this one, we're going to be putting together this sweet little like bakery box, um, which I had on my blog last week. Now, I've been sick. I've been really sick with uh, what everybody has been sick with lately. Um, and it knocked me out for a couple weeks. So I am better. I, um, I told, I wrote on my blog, if you're interested on how I made the car or how I made the box, <clears throat> leave a comment and uh, tons of comments on, yes, please. I would love to learn how to make the box when you're feeling better. So the time is now. I am feeling a lot better and we're going to put together this box. We're going to be using all um, Greedery products from the new release, um, the Confections release, which is now in the Greedery shop. And uh, there's lots of steps to get through. So let's get started. All right. So I've switched over to my microphone and we're going to start first by taking a quick look at this box. Now I was inspired to make this box because this confections card has so much dimension to it, way more than an envelope could handle. So it was either going to be a hand delivered card or um, I needed to make a special package for it. And since this greetery release uh, is everything sweet and yummy, I thought a little faux bakery box would be the perfect presentation for it. So we're going to start by making the box bottom. I have a piece of heavyweight white cardstock that I've cut to five and three eighths inch by six and five eighths inch. And I'm um, scoring at one half inch on all four sides. And the half inch is going to be the height of the box. Now I'm going to um, fold on those scored lines and make sure that those um, the folded lines are super crisp. I'm going to use my, my score tool to do that, my bone folder. And once my score lines are folded, I'm going to use my detail scissors to cut the tabs. Now I'm cutting on um, the score line as my guide. And I'm also cutting the outside edge of the tab at a slant. Now doing this is going to take away any chance of that part of the tab um, sticking up above the, uh, the edge of the box. Now, if it's hard for you to see the scored lines, you can use a pencil and just draw a soft line as a guide to help you. I have to do this quite often since, um, yeah, my eyes aren't, um, they're not as strong as they used to be. After the tabs are cut, it's time for the adhesive. You want to make sure you're using a very strong adhesive. And you also want to be sure that you're putting the adhesive on the front side of the tab. So make sure the front of the box, the outside of the box is looking up at you. Since the tabs are going to be going um, inside the box, you're going to tuck the tabs inside the box. These pieces are pretty small, so I'm going to use my reverse tweezers to help me get the backing off the adhesive. And then I am um, pulling up the sides that I scored and I'm uh, putting those tabs inside on to the next wall, I guess you can say. I did it off screen because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. But yes, I brought the tab inside the box and, um, and made those corners match up. All right, and that finishes the bottom of the box. You can see I have measurements right there. Um, we're gonna do the top of the box now, which is one eighth larger on each side. This is a good size to do so the top of the box fits nicely on the bottom of the box. Uh, I am using um, a thick cardstock, 110 pound uh, Nina Solar White cardstock. So this, um, I, I need a little bit of room <laughs> because the paper is pretty thick. So keep that in mind. And you know, it just depends on what size or what weight of paper that you're using. I went with one eighth inch. That's what I always use. So I'm just doing everything again, scoring the one half inch line on each side. And then I'm using my detail scissors to um, cut the tabs. Now, I'm not going to put the box top together though. 
before I put the box top together, like put the tabs and make the sides um, stand up, I am going to uh, decorate the box because I'm going to run it through my die cut machine and obviously it needs to stay flat. Okay, now it's time to start using these really fun products from the greenery. We're going to start with Frosted Frames die. This frame um, die cuts a full A4 size card size, um, five and a half by four and a quarter. And uh, this leaves a perfect window for our box top. And you can see it just leaves like an eighth of an inch um, white frame or white border, you know, for the, um, for the top of the box. So I'm going to close the top of the box, that window I just die cut, with acetate. And uh, this can be really tricky, but the acetate that I buy, I'm not sure if all acetate comes like this. I've just, I've always bought this one specific brand off of Amazon. It has um, this like tissue paper behind it. So um, I cut it on my um, cutting, on my cutting board to four and a half by five, I, I, just a little bit smaller than that. And um, I'm using, um, I'm putting double-sided adhesive on the back of it. And this is going to help me see the edge of the acetate because you cannot see it. I'm telling you, it is completely invisible. So that tape really is going to help me um, get that adhesive or get the acetate on the box top uh, correctly and straight. And you can see, I still have to, you see my head, I still have to look very closely to make sure I have um, the acetate on straight. And I only exposed two sides of the adhesive, so I wasn't like completely committed when I put that acetate down. I'm just gonna use my reverse tweezers to take the backing off the other two strips of adhesive. Once the adhesive is exposed. I'm going to push down to make sure that there's a good bond and then we're going to move on to uh, getting the die cuts ready. Now these are adhesive sheets. I uh, love adhesive sheets. I have um, a nice stock of them in my uh, craft room. Um, they're uh, really good if you like to make shaker cards because this is the perfect adhesive for acetate. Uh, glue just makes a mess. If you try and put adhesive on after you die cut something, you get like little adhesive spots all over the acetate. It's just, just put the adhesive on first uh, and it just takes all those little headaches away. I have white cardstock and pink cardstock um, already cut and ready to be prepped with the adhesive. Now the pink cardstock is Pink Champagne by Tailored Expressions. And the reason why I'm putting the full, or using the full panel on the adhesive is because I'm gonna, not only am I gonna cut the frame with both colors, I'm also gonna cut really thin words um, out of the middle of what is left from the frame. So, uh, I pulled back that wax paper and then I'm going to put the wax paper back onto, uh, the adhesive sheet because I'm, I'm going to be able to save the rest of that sheet. I'm only going to take, um, I'm only going to cut off the adhesive that I need for this paper. And, uh, it's really easy. Like I've ha I probably had this specific adhesive package for, I don't know, a year or two, just because any, any small piece that is left over just goes back into the package because you, I mean, I can use them if I die cutting little words or, um, you know, just, it's just good to keep it all. Crafters hate to throw things away, correct? <laughs> okay. The cardstock's ready to go. I got my frosted or, um, excuse me, frosted frames, um, that I'm going to put on top. You saw the back of the adhesive. It's got a nice little milky look to it. So you know, what's, um, the front of the cardstock and what's the back. I'm going to use my paper piercer to get that cardstock out of the frame um, once I ran it through the die cut machine. And I don't recommend taking the backing off of adhesive, um, the adhesive paper like I just did. You, you can easily rip your cardstock. I don't know why I did that. Um, working in a fog, I guess. Um, anyway, the, it worked out fine. So I'm just going to stick a corner into the corner of the box top and the adhesive grips the acetate really nicely, making it super easy to just put the um, frame inside that rectangle. And I'm just going to push down and make sure that the adhesive has um, gripped the acetate all over the frame. 
All right, and then I ran the white cardstock um, through the die cut machine also with the frosted frames. And I'm using my paper piercer to loosen up the, uh, the loopy, the loopy frame. Um, the loopy part of the frame out of the die and I'm going to use the paper piercer also to get those little teeny um, areas out of the loops so because I don't want them on the box I want I want you to be able to see through those little loops so once I get them all poked out um, I'm going to take that adhesive backing off again uh, again don't do it like this. Be a little bit more gentle. I do not want you to rip your cardstock. Luckily, I did not rip my cardstock. Um, but putting it onto the acetate, I just kind of maneuvered the little loops into the um, into the frame. It was super easy to do. Just took my time and guided each little curve um, into place and uh that finished doing the uh the frosted frames so now i have the leftover pieces from the inside of the frame that's got the adhesive backing which is going to be perfect so i can die cut the word sweet i'm going to be using the greeteries piped sentiment sweet die this is uh has two pieces to the set the shadow die and then the word die and i'm just going to use the word die it's a super thin um, die cut. So you definitely want to be careful with this um, when you're working with this die because it is a very uh, delicate die. So I um, used the paper piercer to poke out all of those um, intricate spots that don't need to be in the word. And um, I also die cut the pink, um, the pink cardstock with the same word. And once I got all the little pieces poked out and the adhesive backing off, I'm going to stick it on my silicone mat. And this is such a great way to use your silicone mat because the adhesive is not going to stick. It's not going to stay on the mat. Now it's going to have a nice grip to it, which is going to make it easy for me to be able to stack these words together. But I want a little bit of that pink to poke out. So it's kind of a shadow. It just gives a really fun effect. Um, so using the silicone mat makes it really easy for me to do that. And then once I like the way it looks, I can just pull it off the silicone mat and then move it over to the acetate and um, just use my fingers to push that down onto the acetate. And the, the box top is now done. And I just love how pretty it is. These dies are just so delicate and, and sweet. <laughs> So to finish the box, I'm adding adhesive to the tabs, and then I'm going to attach the tabs to the side of the box to make that box top finished. And then this is going to fit really nicely over the bottom of the box. So I do have just a couple stray pieces of paper that is either on the die or maybe stuck to the acetate. So I'm going to use a synthetic paintbrush, which has stiffer hairs than um, a real paint, you know, a real hair paintbrush. And it, and it um, using the stiff paintbrush is perfect to get those little hairs off of your die cut or to get them off the um, the acetate. I definitely recommend having um, a stiff haired brush to help you clean up your projects towards the end. So once I got the, um, the box, the acetate kind of brushed off, uh, put the card back into the bottom of the box and stuck the top on. And it's just an absolutely lovely project. I love, love, love this box. I love I love this whole collection. All right. Well, that's all that I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah, it's just, it's been a, it's been a long month. So I'm really excited to get back into my crafting routine, turning on my camera and sharing my passion with you. So uh, be sure to subscribe so you can see my future videos that are coming up. I have lots of ideas of, um, projects that I want to share and uh, make sure you check out the other video that I posted today on boxes. So we just made the sweet um, little bakery box, but I have a video also with um, three different boxes using uh, a formula that 
um, I use when I make all of my boxes, except this one. This one is actually made from one piece of paper. So um, I have full measurements on this box too. So I'll link that video down in the video description if you want to stop by and see that. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, be sure you subscribe before you leave. Please give this video a thumbs up. Find me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is my love for paper. I'd love to see any projects that you make, um, any boxes that you make. So be sure to um, give me a, you know, tag me or comment and leave my name in the comment. Um, I'll stop by. I'd be more than happy to see what you make. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Okay. I will see you soon. Bye.